All right, welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And today is a very special episode of the Waveform Podcast. Mm-hmm. I would say for a couple reasons, but number one, first in-person guests we've ever had in the new Waveform studio, Colin and Samir, welcome to Waveform. Thank you. We're, we're honored to be here. So some of my favorite YouTube creators, and I, my goal is to have all of my favorite creators come to the studio so we can talk about YouTube and talk about everything related to this job. But we share this job of making videos on the internet. And I have a lot of questions that are sort of generally in the like creator economy world. And we'll talk sure. about a bunch of that stuff. But for the for the uninitiated, do you have like a like a spiel that you give for like we have, we have many job? a spiel. Many a spiel. We'll do it as quickly sure. as possible. Sure. Um we started on YouTube 10 years ago. Um, we started making extremely niche content on YouTube just because there was no other place to make it. And yep. it was all content about the sport of lacrosse, which we played. Right. Uh, both of us played that. And that kind of helped us navigate through this, you know, this world of of making content and aggregating a community of like-minded people mm-hmm. that that really couldn't exist anywhere else. And it was a network and and content that we wish we had when we were younger. Like we wish we had a place to hang out and watch videos about athletes and yeah. you know what was going on in our community. And yeah. so we went through that process. Um, we built a network. We turned it from one channel to 60 channels and we ended up selling the company in, in 2014. Mm. Uh, we stayed on with the sports company that bought us and we worked with you know all types of different creators, most notably Dude Perfect. Mm. Uh, found our way through like working with brands, working with creators and fell in love with the, just this, just the, the world of YouTube because it gave us a career and we felt like we wanted to help others get a career as well. And so today we make content about creators for creators where, you know, not only are we um, trying to tell the stories of of creators, but also having creators like you on the show to help people who are just starting out or even other people in this career learn about what is this career of being a creator and how do yeah. we pull a community together of people who are taking this really seriously and want to do it as a profession. Yeah. I've been watching your guys' videos on creators and interviews on the YouTube landscape for a while. You've been also, Andrew, you've been watching a couple of them. I've been telling everybody to watch them just because they're really good, but also like, let's find as many different ways to tie these experiences we've had together as we can. Um, But one of the common things I've noticed, so we've talked about like everything from like the Mr. Beast of the world to all the other tech YouTube creators. And one thing that I keep noticing that I always want to like explore is the advice that you can get from a creator about YouTube, about the platform, about how to make better videos doesn't necessarily always apply. Mm. And so watching, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and plug right off the bat. It'll be in the show notes. The the video you did with Jimmy where you hung out with him, you were in his studio, get all kinds of this awesome information out of him and about YouTube and about the way he approaches making videos. And I want to listen to that whole thing and just, just take every little bit of advice I possibly can to make our videos better but not all of it actually works and applies to tech. So I'll just give a quick example. You might say something like, uh, you really want to be um, introducing people to a storyline within the first 10 seconds of a video. But that bit of advice might not work if you're trying to review a product, for example, and you have to talk to the person considering buying the thing immediately. They would leave if you started telling a story and it has nothing to do with the product. So I'm curious when you guys talk to bunch of different creators and different genres who have different pieces of advice that they give. Do you find that there's more overlap or almost no overlap between, let's say, a beauty creator or a tech creator or a vlogger and all the different types of YouTubers you've talked to? So I I personally actually disagree about what you just said about tech videos. Interesting. I actually think you can introduce multiple narratives, introduce new stories when it comes to the product. It's just not the same way. It's not you telling a story, but if you said like, there's two things I really like about this and one thing I really don't, Mm. all of a sudden you've just introduced something that I'm waiting for. I see. That's a story. What's the thing Marquez doesn't like about this? And Mm. I'm waiting for that. And so I think actually a lot of the advice that he's giving is, the way I take it is more of this just general storytelling advice. And if someone's you know, you're introducing a a product and there's no tension, there's no, nothing new that's going to happen. Um, then I might not stick around. And I think, you know, I I think Colin should explain also this advice from the creators of South Park when it comes to storytelling. And I actually think storytelling advice applies to everyone who's telling a story. Yeah. yeah, There's this clip where the creators of South Park are speaking to a class and they said that a really 
bad story will go like this. It'll go, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And you think like that's, a, that's an extremely boring way to intake information. Yeah. And what you want is a story that goes, this happened, but then that happened. Therefore, this happened. So you want some causation between the mm -hmm. beats in your story. And I think that's something that could exist completely in a tech video mm -hmm. where you're saying, here's this new phone that was just launched. History has shown us that it's been really incredible. It's been an incredible line of products. But this one is different. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you should think differently, right? And if you can yeah. keep that going throughout, you'll hook people and keep them longer. I think one of the interesting things about reviewing tech products is a, a large part of what we do is actually deciding which products to review, if I'm just mm -hmm, like narrowing mm -hmm. it down to reviewers. And so it usually turns out that the stuff we review is at the most extremes. It's either the best stuff and we want to highlight it and show you, or it's like the worst stuff and it's like, I got to warn you not to buy this. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff in the middle that's like most tech, which is like, fine. And sometimes it can be really hard to pull a story out of the stuff that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. Like you'll, you'll get yeah. to mm -hmm. this whole line of products has been fine. This one's also fine. Stay <laughs> tuned. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I yeah, find yeah. like a lot of yeah. channels are like trying to pull a story, yeah. mm -hmm. not even a story, but just trying to like exaggerate things to create a better video, which may actually shift the conclusion about the product. Yeah, so I think there's two things. One, it's like the way you the way you reveal information to the audience mm. is, you know, part of that kind of retention strategy that you can pull is like, okay, I'm going to save this piece of information for there, but I'm going to tell them I'm going to say it. So there's a little bit of like, I can hook them. But I also think there's completely different tension and release points in different formats. So all good storytelling is going to build a ton of tension in the viewer and then release it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's like, I'm, I want to, I'm curious about something and then you let me know. And so I think a tech review is inherently a bunch of tension because it's like, I want to know Marquez's take on this. And so that that's the tension. The release is watching it. So I, I agree with you that it's not apples to apples, but I right. also would say that I think that some of the storytelling advice that you can take from, you know, someone who's able to capture, you know, a hundred million people's attention, then I think you can apply small bits of that. And I think the the thing is like Jimmy on our interview, but then also Jimmy us spending four days with him in North Carolina, like the in-between moments, you get a lot of Jimmy where he's just speaking more directly to us at least like about our content and being more, you know, kind of understanding of what our goals are. And so I think the more time we spent together, the more he started giving us advice that was catered to our channel. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty unique experience. Yeah. Um, but I think there's like general storytelling advice. And and at the same time, I would say that, you know, he reaches an incredibly broad audience. The most broad audience. The most yeah. broad. And I yeah. think there's different tactics to building a niche community. And I think the way I view the internet and how I like to interact with it is through niche communities. I mean, our first business was a network, a sports network dedicated to lacrosse. Yeah. That's a niche community that I'm a part of. And the creator community is another niche community I feel a part of. Right. And so now I think we're creating content for that community. So I want to be a little bit more narrow and I don't actually want the most broad audience. Got it. Yeah, and we won't take his advice to the fullest extreme. Because if we did, you know, our videos would be edited down to six minutes for yeah, attention. Yeah. They mm -hmm. would take us forever. Mm -hmm. And we would leave out valuable things. Sometimes letting someone speak for us for four to five minutes is valuable. Yeah. Right. And so we need to make that decision of, yeah, no, our audience, because we know them, because it is niche, wants to hear about that. Right. Got it. Do you oh. think you would, you think you would last in a Mr. Beast challenge? Which challenge? I'm trying to think. I feel like I'd be pretty decent. Hey, keeping yeah. your hand on something. I, well, I mean, keeping your hand on a phone. That's his app. <laughs> I could definitely keep my hand on a phone. <laughs> no, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, um, I'm decently like mobile and athletic and I don't, I don't know. Like if I, if you put me up against other creators and yeah. editors, I'd feel pretty confident because most creating and editing is like sitting down. Like endurance. And I, yeah. yeah. I feel like I have a little bit of a, a physical advantage, but again, it depends on what the challenge is. So you could is. sit in a seat with poor posture for probably the longest <laughs> yeah. to win. I can <laughs> hunch for hours. Yeah. Okay. Hours. Um, all right. So a lot of what we've talked about also in the YouTube world is YouTube as a platform has a relationship with its creators in a way that 
not every platform does. Like, not every platform sends plaques to its creators mm-hmm. when they reach milestones and has, like, creator, you know, teams that work with us and things like that. Um, I'm curious from you, what are, like, the biggest complaints that you've seen from creators to YouTube? Because I feel like here we're, I don't want to say isolated, but it seems like every gate or every, like, big problem that YouTube has seemingly seemingly doesn't really affect our channel very much, whether that's because we're a tech channel or we're a PG channel or we're a friendly channel to YouTube, whatever it is, it seems like we've been pretty safe from all of it. Um, and I guess that's why, but I'm curious what sort of things mm. you guys see that ring true the most often among other creators. I think the number one complaint from creators that I hear is the inability to A-B test thumbnails. Because I think yeah. thumbnails are mm. this like incredibly stressful um, part of our job. Do you remember when it was just like the middle frame of yeah. the video? Mm-hmm. Do you remember about that. this? Yeah. yeah. You could game that yeah. system pretty easily. And totally. then it became like uh, you need to be a partner to upload a, a thumbnail. Yep. And now everyone who is like, anyone can upload thumbnails now, right? I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But like thumbnail designer is becoming, it's great that it's becoming like a job in our world, right? Like mm-hmm. that's like, that's a difference between a million views and a hundred thousand views a lot of times mm-hmm. is your thumbnail. But I think that's the the most stressful part of creating is that you make this amazing video. Not only do you have to be like, to be a YouTuber, not only do you have to be um, good on camera, you also have to be a good producer. You also have to be a good director, a good animator, a good editor. Like you have to be all these different things. And then on top of that, you have to be really good at packaging. And that's actually what you find out over time is that's actually the most important part of the job then. Yeah. And I think the importance of that is really positive because it, increases like the the barrier to entry and makes the quality really good. But I think thumbnails today are causing a lot of creators a lot of stress and are <laughs> the biggest complaint is like, can we just A, B test? Yeah. Like, it seems like it's such a simple fix. Um, but I would say that's the biggest complaint. It would be nice. We were just talking about this the other day, but um, would you be uh, open to being able to change? So when it kind of auto plays on your, say your smart TV or like when you're hovering over something yep. on the web and you don't get to choose what that auto plays, like being able to now change that similar to a thumbnail. Oh, and yeah. you think that could increase mm-hmm. click through? Yeah, definitely. I think you can choose that on, uh, on Instagram reels and TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like being yeah, able yeah, to do yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause, Cause we've had ones where we just released a studio video where we had the Rivian and it has this like gear tunnel in the bottom and the clip it shows was Tim crawling through that gear tunnel. So like super fun. Right. But we've had other reviews where it chooses like half of that one second is Marquez and A-roll and the other half is switching to B-roll and looks terrible when yeah, it yeah, like, yeah. goes right. on. Yeah. Yeah. So that happens to us sometimes yeah. where they'll, they'll yeah. choose B-roll or a graphic that doesn't mm-hmm. really have to do exactly with the video. Yeah, yeah, and I've chosen stuff on my like smart TV because I accidentally scrolled over it and that one clip was like, that was kind of interesting. I think I'm going to watch the video now. Yeah, I oh. believe that's uh, AI selected mm. at yeah. this point. Mm-hmm. Whether it's be from retention or just from a random, I think point they try and choose a face. Typically, usually, yeah. Usually. yeah. I mean, all of my videos have a face in them. Sometimes right. it doesn't pick a face, and I find that odd. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I think so. I see a lot of. I agree with A/B testing thumbnails. I think that would be great. I would use that for sure. Um, so I agree definitely that A/B testing thumbnails would be mm-hmm. fun. I would love to. I would do that all the time. But. I also am probably among the YouTubers that I know and associate with in the tech world, I'm probably the one that changes my thumbnails the least. Mm. I think I see a lot of people upload a video with a title and a thumbnail, and then an hour later change the title, and then an hour later change the thumbnail, and then change the title and the thumbnail. And I'll come across it a third time in my home on my home feed or something. I'm like, I think I've watched this already, but it has a different title and thumbnail, so maybe I haven't. Um would you do you guys play with title and thumbnail at all? Do you find that that's like a major, major part of how you package a video and and manipulating it and changing the way it performs or no? We do play with them, but from my perspective, if we're frantically changing titles and thumbnails, we made a mistake much earlier in the process. if If we have good ideas make titles and thumbnails easy. Yeah, so we try and make sure we have that figured out before mm-hmm. we even make mm-hmm. the decision to start filming or scripting the video. Yeah, it's kind of changed our process to to just say, hey, let's start that way in the beginning and say, okay, we have this idea, but wait, before we take any other steps, yeah, mm-hmm. how do you package this idea? Yeah, I think one of the conversations sure. I had with Jimmy was like, uh, yeah. when do you pick the title and thumbnail? And for him, it's before the video even gets shot at all. And for us, we were like, well, that sounds like great advice. Let's see how early we can apply it. 
But if we're reviewing a piece of tech and we don't know how good it is and we don't know if we're going to recommend it or not, I can't choose a title and thumbnail before testing the thing. Mm -hmm. So I got to test the thing. And then maybe at that point when I'm starting to write the actual video, I can pick a title and thumbnail. But that's much later in the process. And at that point, I don't know anymore if it's a good title and thumbnail. <laughs> but that might be with new formats because you have a lot of formats too where you know first impressions, you're going to put that in the title. Yeah, that right? is true. And, yeah. And so that's what we're in the process of finding or what are our formats yeah. where we it'll make it easy for us and for our audience. That does though get kind of annoying sometimes when we, we know we have to put Galaxy S21 Ultra <laughs> first impressions. Now the actual title we give it basically has to be Sure. Three to four words. Like yeah. we're, we have to limit ourselves from that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a pain sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is nice to be able to just always say impressions or something like that. Half the time, our titles are created in the uploading process. Yeah, like so the I video still, is done. We're still brainstorming it. Yeah, I have, a, I have this checklist of like the process of making a video. And it's usually as I'm uploading the video that I am finishing what I think the title should be. I have my last two or three options yeah. for a title and we're shooting the thumbnail at that moment. And I don't know if that's, I mean, there are lots of tech topics and other ways to come up with a title and thumbnail first and craft a video around it, but specifically for reviews, that's been a challenge of mine is like packaging the video mm. in an earlier than as I upload way. That's like us for interviews. You know, we just filmed an interview with you. We don't know exactly what yeah. the title thumbnail is gonna be. Yeah. yeah, we have like a loose idea going into the interview. Coolest guy ever. Yes, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That, might, that might work. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, an, I think the other complaint about, the, the other common complaint is like, I don't make enough money. Mm -hmm. You know, AdSense, you know, this, that, or the other. And my perspective on that is for so many years, because we were in such a niche topic, AdSense was not a part of our business model at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that YouTube owes us anything for uploading videos to YouTube. Sure. I just don't believe it. And yeah. and I think my perspective is just that it's our job to make a business out of it. If we can find audience, that's that's on us. YouTube gives us the platform and it's a search engine and they give us the tech. AdSense, I always look at as like, it's a cherry on top of our business. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I think over the past year, our our growth has been such that it's a it's a nice cherry on top. But I just don't view it. I think any creator who's starting out and being like frustrated that YouTube's not paying enough. Yeah. It's like you you have to be doing this for a long time to, for that to be a, a significant source of revenue. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like the, uh, I, I, again, I find out different things about the industry at different times based on the arc of me making videos. And it was kind of the opposite. Like it was just AdSense for like the first eight years. And I didn't spend that much. So that was fine. But then I had to learn the building the business part afterwards right. to, to, to structure it in a way that it was much more reliable and steady. And I didn't have to depend on whatever CPM it was that month. Right. Um, but it's, it's valuable to learn that stuff like as mm -hmm. early as you can. I feel like an, another complaint we hear sometimes is that YouTube is not serving my videos to my subscribers. I find that uh, kind of a cop out. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hear a lot of like, and it's kind of comes back to what you said, like the title and the, if you're scrambling for the title and thumbnail and like, why isn't it being served? There's probably a reason before YouTube makes that decision that has affected whether it's being served or not. And also mm -hmm. it's probably being served. It's just not being clicked on. Yes, yeah. it is being served. Yeah. It's just yeah. not being clicked on. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back with more from Colin and Samir. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. This episode of Waveform is brought to you by Shopify. So if you're running a business, you've probably had dreams about this sound. Yeah, you know that sound. If you're 200 years old, it'll remind you of a brass cast register. If you're a little younger than that, though, it'll probably remind you of Shopify. So Shopify is an all-in-one commerce platform designed to help entrepreneurs start, run, and grow their businesses. And here's why you should use it for yours. Shopify takes all the resources that huge businesses have relied on for years and makes them available to small businesses and bushy-tailed upstarts. So it's got every tool you need to sync up online and in-person sales, gather the data your business needs to thrive, and connect with customers across a huge number of social networks, including Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and more. So right now, more than 1.7 million businesses use Shopify and rely on it to connect with customers down the street and on the other side of the globe. So at this point, if you're not using Shopify to grow your business, grab detailed reports, including conversion rates, profit margins, and more, you're holding yourself back. So what's the point of that? So go to shopify.com slash waveform for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. So grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com 
slash waveform today. Shopify.com slash waveform. This episode of Waveform is brought to you by Wondrium. All right, I don't know about you, but I'm generally a curious person. I want to know where things started and, and how they work the way they do. Just interested in figuring things out generally. And I can search night and day online and struggle to find the answer sometimes, but that is until I found Wondrium. So when you think of Wondrium, think of it like a streaming service for people who want to open their minds. And on top of that, they want to make lifelong learning fun. It's not just a bunch of talking heads. Their videos are engaging and will blow your mind with expansive content. So if you're a listener of Waveform, you should definitely check out the course Introduction to Machine Learning. It's fascinating. It gets you into the nitty gritty of search engines, navigation systems, and even game playing robots. Or maybe just jumping into the past with uh, understanding Greek and Roman technology, which is pretty crazy. Seriously, one minute you can be learning about how high tech robots learn on their own. The next you're learning about how ancient Greeks did high end masonry without modern tools. Pretty awesome. So you can check out Introduction to Machine Learning and thousands of other videos Wondream has to offer. I have an amazing offer to get you started, a free trial with unlimited access. So to get this offer, sign up now through my special URL, wondrium.com slash waveform. So that's W-O-N-D-R-I-U-M dot com slash waveform. Go to wondrium.com slash waveform. Now back to Colin Samir. Uh, there is one thing that I think we would like to come back that would help us a lot, and that's and I get why they took it away, but annotations coming yeah. back for us would be huge. I mean, ultimately being able to re-upload a video in the same position would be the best, but I also yeah. kind of understand why, you know, you don't put that in. But the amount of times we make these like very, very small mistakes that don't change the video at all. Like we say the new iPhone has titanium rails instead of aluminum rails and the, the amount of people that yeah. call us out for stuff like that, if we could just toss an annotation in there. Like good for engagement though. Uh, yeah, yes, for true. engagement, for it's not engagement. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Uh, it, yeah, it yeah. just gets to this point where, like, I'd love to just put a little like asterisk, like we meant the Snapdragon eight eighty eight, not the mm. eight eighty seven, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think in the tech world, that specifically, it would be so useful. Like, product names are eight long, eight words long, and you have to get every single one right. And specs are very, very long and very detailed numbers, and you just yeah. want to be able to just add a little asterisk mm -hmm. inside a video. And when there is one, the best I can do is pin a comment in the top of the description, yeah. but there's no way to just- Or just tweet about it, and, but that's not on YouTube, so it doesn't really the, help. I, yeah. I don't get why a partner, sh like having partners like get annotations. I remember the days of, you yeah. know, like 12 annotations or mm -hmm. a, a full screen clear one. So when you click on it, it brings you to a link. Get rid of that. But yeah, partners mm -hmm. with annotations feel like it would make sense. I do think that in, in a- tech review like purposefully sometimes not not <laughs> not the tech itself but even like fumbling or saying a word that's completely off at times like would create a lot of like you know retention of like wait what did he just say yeah we, we did it one time in a short which was really fun really? Um, yeah we said uh, we, we, had of, we said the head of robert kinsel youtube yeah. like we should have said the head of youtube robert kinsel uh -huh. yeah. said this and we uh, said the head of robert kinsel yeah. tripled yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. yes that's funny. Like, mm. I think some people assume... We'll say that's why we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. That, I think people assume <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's what's happening yeah. when it really it's like we just went from reviewing a phone to reviewing a camera to reviewing a car to reviewing a tablet. Right. It's like I forgot that it's the triple eight. My bad. Right. Um, so annotations, I'll put in... An, any, mm -hmm. If anyone on YouTube is watching this, annotations. We'll please. take it. We'll test it for you. Yeah. yeah. I also think we're going to see video replies make a comeback. Really? Yeah. I liked video responses. Because now that they have YouTube shorts. Oh, yeah, oh, true. Interesting. That, so they could tie in. So yeah. people would reply to videos with specific with a, short with form. With a short. Yeah. Yeah. I and that really would create like that. more creators because yeah. there's this whole ecosystem where even people like us, we talk about YouTube creators. Mm -hmm. So you could just go into the comments, drop a short video. Yeah. And yeah. start was, building an audience. Mm -hmm. That was a really big part. I mean, you see the way TikTok does it now where videos are embedded in comments, but like that was a that was a whole YouTube ecosystem thing. There were reply channels. Yeah. And under any video, you could either so if I was the creator, I could enable anyone to submit a video reply and they'd all just show up. But then people started spamming them or yeah, people yeah. would just like spam replies or whatever. So you could only approve uh you could set it to approve only and then approve whichever ones you wanted. Mm. And so you would often find that the biggest creators would always approve replies from the same creators. And then those creators who were just replying to people would have their own ecosystem because of the people they replied to, which is fascinating. And I, I really like the idea of bringing shorts back as video reply or bringing video mm -hmm. replies back as shorts. Because if we made a video about you yeah. and then we approved you to be able to, to make a video to reply, it. if we got something wrong or if you wanted to add something. Yeah. Yep. And then it's on my channel, so people link to right. what mm -hmm. I just made a video mm -hmm. about. Interesting. 
That's actually really good. It's honestly the best idea I've heard for shorts. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. I'd love to talk to you guys about shorts yeah. to do them. We've been pretty um, negative about them, maybe. I I'm mean, like, or we've been vocal about them, I'll say, but we don't really yeah. do them. They're right. very against, not against, but they're not I'm like, like our regular back, content. They're very different. They're definitely not our original content. And that's like on the main channel, the number one thing we know is like we have a format. Mm -hmm. And we're sticking with it and we love it. So obviously a, a 40 second video doesn't fit in that format. A vertical 40 second video in the same feed as our regular videos mm -hmm. exactly. feels off. Yeah. But you guys have, you've done shorts on the main channel. You guys have experimented mm -hmm. with shorts in the past. Do you, how would you summarize, first of all, your experience with YouTube shorts? Because I've had, I've heard a variety of versions of responses. Very, I mean, very positive. Yes. Very like, positive. Generally positive. I would say that for us, you know, we had, um, we had a creator on our show who goes by Nas Daily, and he, he said something to us about platforms, which is really interesting around like just the, the concept of supply and demand. There are some platforms that have enough supply of content and enough demand. They've reached equilibrium. There's 50,000 pieces of videos uploaded per day and 500 million viewers per day. Like that's average of 10 views per video or whatever. That's equilibrium platforms. There are platforms that don't have equilibrium. Right, where they have incredible demand for views, not enough supply for content. That is the place you want to be in. And that's why creators have such big opportunity mm -hmm. uh, because the platform wants that content. They yep. want to experiment with it. They want to try it. Yeah. But on the other side of it, for us, what we notice is it takes us a really long time to make a video, but we have a lot of thoughts. Like we have quick takes mm -hmm. that we want to get out. And yes, there's, you know, there's a vlog or like, pop open the camera and start talking, but then they're still editing and like, they're just so much. And I think yeah. vertical short form content lowered our barrier to entry to just have like some forgiveness around it and be like, it's okay, it's just a vertical video. Yeah, And we shoot it straight through the phone and we do some editing, but it, it is this first opportunity for us in a long time to film something and get it out on our YouTube channel in the same day. So if something happens, we can react to it. Yeah, yeah. And from our conversations with people at YouTube, the, you know, the, the shorts feed and the main channel feed, like short form videos and long form videos are kind of bifurcated in the back end. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, it's not one in the same. It's not like, you know, they know it's a different type yeah, of video. It's not going to bring your average view duration down okay. or anything yeah, like that. Okay. So for us, we were like, okay, if there's no real big risk to the channel, yeah, why not? Like, why not try them? And from what we've seen is, you know, in the past, 28 days and we've done around like 25 million views on the channel and there's like i think above 60 percent of that is coming from shorts mm. and um that has just generally made our entire catalog of content uh generate more viewership because there's just more traffic to our channel right and so if you think about it as like a retail shop like our channel is like a retail shop we've just increased our traffic significantly mm -hmm. Uh, and when that happens, then they're going to look at other stuff in our shop too, right? And so they're going to look at our back catalog. Right. They're going to look at all of our, and the, and our subscribers have grown. Our, our just overall brand exposure has has grown because of shorts. So, I mean, one of our shorts has 15 million views and that converted about 16 or 17,000 subscribers. Wow. Okay. And the value yeah. prop in the short is, you know, explaining things that are happening on YouTube and in media. Yeah. So if someone likes that and then, that's their first entrance mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, so my experience has just been watching other people experiment with shorts. And so I've seen people try it on the main channel. I think I probably will eventually start a channel just to experiment with shorts because mm -hmm. I have a lot of ideas that I think would be good shorts. That channel should be called MKB. Shorts. It's just, just MKB. MKB. Oh, MKB because it's, 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 it's a shortened version. Short uh, version. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like MKB that. HD. <laughs> but but yeah. also like what, the studio to me feels like an ex, uh, a space to experiment. Like yeah, why not really experiment yeah. With shorts on the studio channel. True. And especially for me, I look at it as like right now, again, that like the demand is high and the supply is just catching up. Right. That's what I was going to so, talk about. So like there's going to be a moment where that swaps. Viewership's yeah. going to change. It's going to, they're going to, they're going to test and iterate and test and iterate. And there's just a moment right now where they're just serving everyone the same small amount of shorts. Yeah. Or they're just like, at least from what we've seen, we've seen creators who have just taken shorts and grown to 6 million subs. True. There's a creator called Dental Digest. Have you seen him? No. He, he's like a dental creator. And okay. every short form video is is very similar. It's it's like one format where he tests different brushes and sees how well they brush his teeth. He's a dental student. He grew from zero to 6 million subs this year. 
Um, That's wild. All through shorts. And now he's making long form content. Right. And it's trending. And it's doing well. Yeah. yeah one, oh. of his, one of his longer form videos was uh, number one on trending. And so he basically mm -hmm. used shorts to build a platform I think the thing that's dangerous is if the shorts have a completely different function than yep. the long form video, right? It has to all mm -hmm. fall in the same value prop. And if it does, then why not? I think it's yeah. YouTube's play to get creators from TikTok over to YouTube. It, th as you saying it, it makes perfect sense because I've heard from multiple different people, you know, TikTok creators are getting huge, but ultimately even the biggest TikTokers yep. want to be YouTubers. Yep. But converting that from a whole different app is is hard. So if you're in the app already and you can just be on the same channel and there's the long form mm -hmm. contact that they now converted for, that's perfect. And they just took away the barrier to entry, which yeah, was exactly. really high. Yeah. Now you can literally just repurpose a lot of your TikToks, yeah. download yeah. them, take the logo off, upload them to YouTube Shorts, and you could have, if you've, yeah, if you've right. been on TikTok for the last three years, you could have years worth mm -hmm. of yeah. valuable content ready to go. Also though, you don't have to upload a thumbnail for Shorts. I mean, we just don't even do you it. You don't have to, but you can. You can. Yeah. So if you go to our like videos tab, mm -hmm. it's not very aesthetic anymore, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, it, it is just these like vertical shorts mixed in with like our uh, edited thumbnail. So yeah. that is not very aesthetic. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's just playing in a, you know, auto play. Yeah. So the, you don't, you're not really thinking you're not about the, the thumbnail and the shorts. You're yeah. not thinking about the packaging because actually the audience isn't even choosing to watch it. The app is choosing the audience. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the inverse of the traditional YouTube video. And True. I think for that, it's, it's really interesting. And then I think YouTube, the thing that YouTube has from an opportunity perspective is that TikTok, like you mentioned, a lot of TikTok creators are coming over to YouTube to mm -hmm. like graduate for their career, right? And we've heard the classic, you know, comparison on Twitter all the time of like, would you rather have 50,000 YouTube subscribers or 5 million TikTok followers? And almost, it, it's like so amazing that it always trends towards 50,000 YouTube subscribers it's just because you can make a career on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the play to say, hey, we are the, we are YouTube, we are the better place to launch your career. So we'll have these short form videos too. And so if you were thinking about TikTok, just do it over here because then you're already building that foundation mm -hmm. like Dental Digest where it's like, now you have 6 million subscribers. Now you have a career. It's YouTube. Yeah. You're already there. You're already there. Yeah. I think that one point you brought up about supply and demand is really interesting. The the When I see new features get launched, especially by YouTube, but kind of by any social network, I always really like diving into how much it looks like they've embraced this new feature. Mm -hmm. Does it look like they're just kind of trying it on the side? Or does it look like they are building part of their site around it? And to me, shorts does look like YouTube is like committing really mm -hmm. hard to mm -hmm. making shorts a big thing. Sometimes I see features where like, you know, for example, there's podcasts on Facebook or like there's video mm -hmm. podcasts on Spotify and I don't really see that many of them. And I kind of wonder how committed they are because I see the feature ad, but I don't want to pivot my whole business around something that might disappear in a year. Mm -hmm. um, so I am glad to see shorts get the attention that I mm -hmm. think that it's rightly deserving. And I'm I'm definitely going to want to experiment with a little yeah. bit. You know those restaurants and strip malls that say like, I, we have these in LA. I don't know if you guys have these here. It says like Chinese food and donuts. <laughs> that sounds amazing, <laughs> but I, I want one. <laughs> yeah, I see where you're going. <laughs> okay, all right, you see where I'm yeah. going. But basically like for me personally, I'm, I want to go to a Chinese restaurant for Chinese food and I want to go to a donut shop for donuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I think about apps that are trying to do a lot, I think that like it overwhelms me. I'm like, I, are you are you a specialist in this? Is this mm -hmm. a thing you make? Are you trying to serve me Chinese food and donuts at the same time? Yeah. Because you saw an opportunity. So I think for me as a consumer, I, I, I'm so specific. Like I listen to podcasts on Spotify. I yep. watch video on YouTube. I might also be the old guy who's just like, doesn't want to change my ways. I worry about that. But- <laughs> But that's just who I am. Uh, and yeah. and I think a lot of consumers are like that too, where it's simplicity wins a lot and singular focus wins mm -hmm. a lot of the time. So yeah. YouTube was based in short form video. When we first started in 2011, we were uploading 20 second videos to YouTube because oh, that's yeah. where short form video lived. There was no Instagram video. There was no, there was no TikToks. There was no Vine at the time. So short form video lived on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I think they actually do have an expertise in it where they can solve how to serve you videos. And then their video monetization is better than other platforms. So they will also solve down the line how those yeah. are monetized. I think it's only a matter of time until, you know, you open up the Instagram app and you're just in reels and potentially even with YouTube as well, because mm -hmm. it's an extra step that keeps you away from a view, keeps you away from creator discovery. Right. I yeah. could totally see YouTube doing that with the, with, with the, the mobile app. Yeah. Netflix yeah. is also doing it too. Have you noticed that? 
the, ne- the, the Netflix so? mobile app has a TikTok feature oh, gosh. where you're swiping through mo- actually, moments of sense. shows. Yeah, is you it, can't I, upload yourself. Obviously, no, but, but it's like yeah. it's like funny moments from their shows that oh, are. Yeah. It's the exact same UI. It's called Fast Laughs. It's yeah. just for the comedy. Huh. comedy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. I mean, Netflix is serving. That's their job is to yeah. find stuff for you. So Even their yeah. their like smart TV app is like you can't accidentally just take your hand off the controller for a second because it starts playing the trailer the second you right. hover oh, yeah. over right. everything, which. Very yeah, annoying, yeah, yeah. but obviously extremely, extremely <laughs> successful. That's it. a good point. It's yeah. basically already autoplay. Yep, it's just yeah. starting to play already. I found that my our videos have slowly gotten longer. Like you said, you're, you mm-hmm. started with shorter videos. Even on our channel, I think the, the first couple of years of videos I was making were all like three to five minutes long. And they were the same genre, but they were all three to five minutes because that's all I needed to tell the story or to say how good the thing was. Today, a short video is like seven minutes long, and I've uploaded 15, 25, 35 minute long videos. So part of that is definitely that I feel like it's taken me longer to finish all of my thoughts on a piece of tech, and it, I generally, I just want to make longer videos, and I think that's valid. But the other half is that at a certain point, YouTube started favoring longer videos Mm -hmm. and so i felt like a little bit of it was leaning into the algorithm of like hey well that's more watch time too so longer videos is fine um how much do you find it to be problematic or maybe even beneficial to bend your content to the algorithm because i know that's something Mm -hmm. some people just don't want to do ever and that's something entire channels sometimes are based around so i'm curious your thoughts on that so we describe you know this term content market fit Mm -hmm. as a dance between three things. One is what you want to make. It still has to be what you want to make. You have to want to make this video and enjoy making the video. The second is there has to be an audience for that. You have to be plugging into, uh, you know, an audience or you have to be aware that you're going to create an audience. Um, But there has to be an audience for what you're making. And then the, the, the third thing is the algorithm. So I think all three actually have to play together. What you want to make, what your audience wants to watch, and then what the algorithm wants to feed. Mm-hmm. And I think that you have to have all three check. A lot of times, you know, when we're thinking about packaging, like we are thinking about the algorithm, but there's sometimes where we have an idea and we think about really good packaging for it. And then we're like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to make that video. Like right. that's not, that's not us. Yeah. Um, and so I think all three have to be clicked on for it to work. And for you to enjoy it, Um, because I think audience, there's too much content now where if you're just doing it for the algorithm, I think an audience can feel that. They can sniff that out. Pretty easily. Like you've probably watched, I've watched videos where I'm just like, oh, this is kind of like, you're you're almost watching like a game, like someone game the algorithm or like someone, Mm -hmm. you know, create like a. It's like when you watch someone like uh, like the last three pages of an essay or just to reach the minimum threshold yeah. and they're just yes. spewing words. Yeah. And they're like, I can tell what you're trying to do I get here. what's happening here. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, when I think about it, like I don't think I personally watch content on YouTube that's good for the algorithm. I like to watch really long form podcasts, mm-hmm. which probably don't have amazing retention. I love to watch loose vlogs, like the type of content that I like to watch, you know? Yeah. When it, when it comes to length, though, there's also, as a creator, an intangible question you have to ask yourself, which is, is this interesting? Yeah. Would our audience find this right. interesting? Right. And that determines the length of our video. If mm-hmm. we have a two-hour conversation with a creator, and if by chance only 15 minutes we actually found interesting and we ask everyone in our office, did you find this interesting? That's the, It's going to be a 15-minute video. Yeah. Right. But if we went for two hours and it was all interesting... And we ask everyone again in our in our office, listen to this, watch it. Was it interesting? Then that's what goes up. I mean, two of the three things I mentioned though are like from a distribution mindset. One is what does the audience want, and one is what is what the what does the platform want? Uh, okay, right. And so those are like distribution mindset. So two thirds of your brain is distribution. Mm-hmm. The third is creation, which is what do I want to make? And when you look at at least for me, when I look back at the last four years, we've been we have a, we've had the Colin and Smear channel for four years, and we made no money doing Colin and Samir for three years of that, right? Or or maybe it's now five years and it was three years of not working and then two years of working. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that has been that shift. When I look back at the older videos, I'm like, oh, we were creators. We didn't want to cut out stuff that actually was uninteresting, mm-hmm. but we liked it because we were like, that was a cool shot or that was a good thing. That was a fun line we said, let's keep it in. And then yeah. today when we all watch cuts together, we're watching as a group and we are ruthless. We're like, that was boring. Cut it. That was uninteresting. Cut it. 
that was interesting, but not interesting enough. We're going to make it a short, cut it. Yeah. Like we are constantly cutting because we're thinking about the two thirds, which is algorithm and audience. Yeah. Um, this is this is why I like I struggle to apply it to a tech video because if I cut out genuinely useful information because it was boring, I'm not left with a complete video anymore. Yeah. And uh, a lot of what I want to deliver is the best, most informative thing. And I have to drag you from one exciting thing to the other, but also make sure I include all the other things in between about how all this band, this higher bandwidth memory is much better for performance while I get to sharing how much faster it was in Final Cut Exports. Like the exciting thing to me is surrounded by other necessary but less YouTube exciting mm -hmm. things. So I think I, I've never heard it described that way, but I do feel like I am doing that balancing act in my head every mm -hmm. time I'm editing is like, making sure I include the things, but also making sure I quickly get you to the next like highlight while making sure I include all the things that need to be included. I want to be careful when I give you feedback here because what you're doing is work. So <laughs> I'm sure. not going to, and I'm, I have not reached the, you know, we have not yeah, reached the we've level. We've never really made I'm a not, tech video. Yeah, I'm not so, immune yeah. to yeah. feedback. Okay. But I think when you have the opportunities to, and when you've done it on your channel to show and not tell, that's when things get really interesting because it's a very yeah. visual medium. So if it's about like the processing speed, can you show me something? Can you shoot something in 8K and like bring it into the computer and show me how quick that happens while yeah. you're telling me about something else? So you're like, I'm going to load this up and then I'm going to tell you about the next thing. But in the background of the video or in a second split screen, I'm tracking how quickly yeah. something's moving, right? So yeah. then it's like two things are happening at once and you're showing me speed while you're saying something different. And I'm all of a sudden I'm tracking multiple narratives and that keeps me on the edge of my seat. Yeah. Uh, and I think when th the times when you do that, I think that's like the opportunity with tech is to show yeah. as much as possible. Yeah, I've played with that a little bit. I've played, I've definitely played with like how much people respond to what's being said versus what's being shown. Yeah. And again, it depends on what the video is, but I keep coming back to your views. People really linger on what's being said mm more so sometimes than what's being shown, unless That's they contradict. Yeah. So a lot of times I talk about smooth performance and I talk about how this is zippy and fast and I'm showing that too, but sometimes I'll say something is smooth and I'll show a clip of it behaving perfectly normally and people are like, why do you say it's smooth? It looks totally normal. Well, I'm, I'm telling you it's smooth because mm -hmm. I can't show this as well as I need to. I can Got show it. a performance hiccup, but it's hard to show you the smoothness. Mm -hmm. So there's little bits of pieces of tech that are, I just have to say it, yeah, like to tell you mm -hmm. what's happening. So I think it's analog a challenge. Ana I mean, granted, this is for me, who's not like if the, a lot of the stuff you say on your channel. I'm like, I I don't know what you're saying exactly, but I like what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm more of the visual right, guy sure. for your in your audience. But I think also analogy is really helpful. I like, love or like like analog, like you're drawing something. I don't know. Those are, those are the types of things that for me, I need to be like tech. Explain to me like I'm. Probably not five because five year olds are pretty smart now. So <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like tech explained to me like I know nothing about tech. Got we, it. We have done some small things like that. Um, when hole punch cutouts for the front of uh, cell phones were first coming out, yeah. we there was a point where it gets to, it's hard to explain to someone who's never seen it that like it kind of you don't notice it after a while of using it. So what you did was as you were speaking in the A roll, you put a black circle on the screen mm. and then like 20 seconds later, that's it was cool. like, by the way, this has been here the whole time. Did you notice it oh, or didn't yeah, you? That's great. If you didn't, look, you probably aren't yeah. going to notice this, stuff yeah. like that. But I do think it's a it's an interesting thought of like performance or even like charging speeds or something like that to maybe have some sort of a, a ticker on the side. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we kind of did it with the thousand mile race where Michael did our whole map thing. Yeah. So when we're talking about different things, the map is showing what's happening. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. And Michael's obviously a wizard. So He's being able to pull stuff like that off would be pretty easy. Yeah. Th that was something Jimmy said to us actually, just to go back to what he was saying when he was explaining to us like multiple stories, mm -hmm. he was saying to us, he was like, well, you know, what you guys are saying is one story, but your B-roll is another story, right? And so it's actually not necessarily thinking like all about yeah one line of like what you're saying but like your animations are another story and so the 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 viewer is tracking the different information they're receiving as all stories yeah. right and if they all tell the exact same story like in a very didactic way then it's it, it might not be as engaging but if they're doing it in very different ways then yeah that's interesting i feel like that's something i've played around with a little bit more because in a tech video i keep coming back to reviews yeah but like 
Yeah, most of what I'm saying, it helps if you can see it too. So as I'm saying each thing, and this is how most reviews are, it'll cut to showing the thing. Everything, every sentence yeah. has a, mm -hmm. a five second clip to show what's being said. Show it being said, show it's being said, show it's being said. And there are some parts of some tech videos where it's a little bit more storytelling and it's a little bit more, it's a little less show something and a little bit more like telling a story of a gadget or maybe I've really enjoyed using this thing or things that you don't really have a direct clip for. Mm. And that's when in the edit, I'm starting to play a little more with visuals yeah. that show other things. Um, but I want to find more of those. <laughs> because I think your guys' B-roll is a story though. Like yeah. our, our office, when you guys upload a new video, like they'll go nuts over one shot or one animation. They're waiting we're, to see which mm -hmm. shot is going to come. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember the, yeah. even like the studio uh, intro animation was like a, a two hour conversation in our office of mm -hmm. like, so I think you guys do have that, that narrative is a lot of like your B-roll. Like you mentioned, you showed us the, the robot in here. It's like, when you use that, those six seconds, that's a whole story that I'm waiting for. I'm, I'm waiting yeah. to see how that plays out or what's the next shot, what's the next shot. Yeah. There was also one video where you had, and maybe it was multiple videos, but where there was a second angle and every once in a while you would turn oh, yeah. and speak to that other angle. That was really good. And yeah. even that was a retention strategy as an audience member. I was waiting for you to yeah. do that next cut in. Was yeah. that Dogecoin? I think or, so. This is yeah. not financial advice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, good that, video. that reminds me a lot of like Jon Stewart uh, or some of those mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. satire comedy mm -hmm. shows where the information is really dense yeah. and they break it with a joke, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Every 30, 40 seconds, mm -hmm. they break up really dense information with a joke. It kind of reminded me of that. And that's what yeah. gets you through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of something I talked about in the Skillshare class. It was like, I like to have a common thread that goes through the entire video if I can or but at least over multiple sections of the video. But it's hard to keep somebody focused with all that information for a long time. So you do kind of need to find ways to have like beats or like or bring people from point to point. And there's a bunch of different ways right. to do that. And that was one of, that was a fun one. I did like the Dogecoin mm -hmm. video for mm -hmm. that reason. But yeah, that is, a, that, is a, that is a fun one. I wanted to ask you about YouTube comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause we briefly talked about this earlier about how maybe it's not the best place to hang out in the comment section on YouTube. But one of my notoriously, I think I've said this more often than any other piece of YouTube advice is the best comments I get are from people who have never seen any of the videos before. Mm -hmm. And those aren't on YouTube. Those are on like Reddit or like a random website that embeds a video for the first time. And like the audience for that website will be like, oh, this is a good video for this reason. Those are the most informative, interesting comments that, in, that inform how I can improve and how I can make videos better. Do you hang out in the YouTube comments section at all? Do you hang out on Reddit and Discord? What do you? How do you get feedback from your audience, and what do you think is the most valuable? Well, I'm pretty plugged into the comments, but um, I wouldn't. I would say there's like always four in a month that are like really good feedback. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a few, and then like I'll screenshot it and send it to Colin, and we'll like talk about it. And there's there's from only a YouTube comments. Yeah, there's only okay. like a few. Yeah. And it'll be something about like, hey guys, that one part was unnecessary. I got bored during this part. And it kind you of know? irks you because you're like, you're, you're like oh, I agree with it's you. True. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the worst when it's true. But yeah, I think that type of stuff or like when someone's like, why did you make this video? Like if there's some like m more comments around like our entire brand, like is this on brand for us? So there's some yeah. that are from like people who are watching video to video. The worst is where it's like, hey guys, I typically love your videos, but. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're like, oh God, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. worse when you let down someone who's like a fan. Yep. And then there's also the the people who come in, they're like, wow, I hate these guys. Or like these guys are yeah. But at that terrible. point, it probably means we made a video that a lot of people are watching. Yeah. If like the hate true, really true. starts pouring in, which, which doesn't that, happen to us that like, like in that like crazy, to, to a crazy degree. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's a bit of it where we talk a lot, where if it gets beyond our audience and we start receiving some of those comments of like negativity, then we know that the video was good enough to get beyond yeah. our audience. Right. And yeah. so we're like, and that we, I think you know you're making something that is a value and that has its own perspective if people disagree with it or dislike it. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, appealing to everyone, you're very much like in your bubble. And yeah. so I think that the comments indicate to us not only like certain feedback from our community, but also, you know, when we do make something that allows us to grow the brand yeah. when there's negativity. and. I will say that I want a more tight-knit group 
where we can have more actual feedback from our audience. Mm -hmm. And that might play out over, over discord, uh, in the future, it might play out in other places, but I would say that like, we've also built a culture internally in our office of, of a lot of feedback. And I think that's been really beneficial because there's a lot of times where Colin and I have an idea and we're excited about it and we tell the team and actually happened recently. And they were like, no, we don't think that should be a video that's made on this channel. And mm. we think it should be this one. And we went with the team's advice and it was one of our most popular videos. And so we were oh, like, oh, wow. Like it's so helpful to surround yourself with people who deeply care, but also really understand the brand that you're building so that yeah. the feedback is beyond just us two. Yeah. The diversity of thought. Yeah. 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 I, do you ever look at like other random places outside of the comment section where you might find video feedback? Like if a video is embedded somewhere and you see like traffic from a new audience. I'm terrified by Reddit. Um, I just think <laughs> I'm always, fair. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm always going to get like kicked off or like, I, I feel like an imposter on Reddit. Like I feel like I'm not cool enough on the internet to be there. Um, so I do sometimes search our name on Reddit mm -hmm. and look at some of the conversation. And I find that to be really interesting because yeah. people who are on Reddit are the ones who are really engaged the most. positive negative mm -hmm. even if someone yeah. like says something like oh yeah like you know colin and smear did this and someone's like who i think that's interesting too mm -hmm. where it's like oh wow okay like i don't know i just i find reddit to be interesting to search your name on yeah because i also think it's a validation point that if people are talking about you on reddit then there's you're at you're at least a part of the internet culture yeah you, you contributed know. to something that people find useful and they're sharing yeah. it amongst themselves yeah mm -hmm. which is a good start and then you get feedback I, from that i feel like reddit was a ahead of its time uh and it's st it's still around, but I feel like YouTube could have made a Reddit like mm -hmm. comment section, yeah. like that would have been really amazing mm -hmm. if YouTube had made Reddit or yeah. even like a community chat that that could like the MKBHD community could live within a Google or YouTube ecosystem. It feels like Reddit and Discord and YouTube need to have a meeting. Yeah. A meeting. <laughs> they <laughs> need to talk to each other. Bring yeah. the Reddit comments. Bring Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yep. YouTube thread. Comments. Reddit's been some of the best feedback we've ever seen because yeah. it's like, you know, you can post a, a really nice, well thought out comment. And then because of their organization, you can have a really great conversation under that and very quickly pick what that is. But man, they also know how to leave some very oh, yeah, that, negative, yeah. hurtful yeah, yeah. stuff. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's rough to go through sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you had any feedback, now this is for your audience members, maybe they want to provide feedback you said you've seen maybe four good comments mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. really thought was good yeah, feedback yeah. and there's somebody out there who's a fan of you and maybe wants to suggest something what, what would be the best way to get the attention because it feels like there's a lot of comments that i've responded to that seem super negative and mm -hmm. i've gotten like in a tizzy about it responded and then i realized they didn't mean any harm yeah they yeah. were actually just sometimes it's hard through text I text think to get off so I think two things. One, the the absolute way to not get our attention, I'm sure you experience this too, is to write us like a essay of an email. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just I can tell from the no, first you, sentence of the email what's going to happen. Yeah. And email. like just just imagine us opening it on our on our mobile device and then scrolling nine times. Like there's no mm -hmm. way we're gonna read it. Yeah. Uh, we get so many of those. On the, on the contrary, like there's very limited amounts, but people who make videos about our videos, mm -hmm. I just consume information through video. That's yeah. just how I like to. Probably the fastest, but the, the hardest way to get our attention. Yeah. The, the best way someone has ever gotten our attention is they Venmoed me a dollar and then wrote their. In their tip? Like, yeah. Like in the description of huh. the yeah, payment? Yeah, they wrote their message in the description of the payment. Because wow. I was like why did I just get a dollar? And then I looked and then I read <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was like, hey, Samir, I found you on Venmo. And I was like, wow, that is, that's unique. And it was like video feedback? In the no, comments? it wasn't video feedback. It was actually like wanting to collaborate on a project. Oh, wow. And we ended up doing it. The guy wanted us really? on, his, on, on his podcast. I was going to say yeah. like, hey, if you have video feedback for us, yeah. you can <laughs> find our memo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we take feedback in <laughs> the form of $10. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we won't yeah. listen to your feedback unless you've done it. Yeah, right. No, but, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm on Twitter all the time. I see a lot of yeah, tweets. Yeah. It's become... Also, though, you have to be careful about um, what you address because if all you ever do is respond to negative feedback, then people see that and they figure the way to get your attention is, is here's feedback. some negative yeah. feedback. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a healthy mix of like reading, understanding. Maybe if it's a genuine question, you can engage and go back and forth with people and you'll get some actually good advice and things like that. Um, but you have to be careful. You have mm -hmm. to be yeah. careful. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever get feedback from fellow tech creators or creator friends? Not enough. I yeah. think that's that's one thing also Jimmy was talking about. Like we we should network better with fellow tech creators. I've been friends with some of these guys for literally a decade. And it's I right. like 
we g- grew up together and now these guys have kids. And I'm like, oh my God, we've mm-hmm. been making yeah. this stuff for so long yeah. that we've grown up. And yeah, no, we should have more inner dialogue. We should have like, we have, we made a Discord like, server a while ago and then it died and then we It's overwhelming. It like I think even right now, the amount of chats that I'm a part of, yeah. I can't, I just can't. I can't, I can't stay on top of it all. Yeah. 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 I can't but keep it's up all, with it. But it's all useful. Like mm-hmm. it's all genuinely it like there's I'm in, I'm in several discords I'm yeah. in like a couple Slack groups and like random group chats on WhatsApp and stuff mm-hmm. and I'm like all of this is great information I'm just like if I if I sit here processing it all I'll never make another video I'll just be reading and replying to everyone. It, what's crazy is like I think the value of internet community is at least for me I find like twelve people to be my cap of anything beyond that I start to lose track of mm-hmm. what's happening. You yeah. know, and like even in Discord too, I think you have to, the culture of Discord is like, you have to have it up to be able to, to yeah. catch up with what's happening. Yeah. Uh, Cause otherwise, behind. yeah, you just fall behind and then you, you feel like uncomfortable contributing. Yeah. That's good advice. I'm going to, I'm going to try to find my like T-Mobile Faith 5. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a good idea. I, yeah. I feel like we get good feedback generally when we see people in person. So CES is always like a, a great time where we, we love CES. Lately, the tech there is not that great anymore, but we get to see all the tech friends that we know. And like a lot of them are on the West Coast. We're obviously yeah. on the East Coast. It's the best part of Being us. able to see everyone go out and have dinner, mm-hmm. they, it just, it comes up in conversation great. and that's all great. But, you know, COVID now and everything, yeah, we've yeah. seen Judner, we've seen, we haven't seen Austin, we haven't seen Linus, like we haven't seen anyone right. forever. And it's yeah. a lot harder, I think, to, and maybe we should normalize it a bit, but mm-hmm. just text someone or send them a messenger be like, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. this could be done a little better because it probably comes off as rude if you're just sending just a message advice. out of the blue and offering yeah. advice. Yeah. Jimmy's not shy about that. No. <laughs> I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. I've, I've had a couple phone calls with Jimmy and yeah. I love that about yeah. it. It's so useful. He's not shy about yeah. it. Yeah. I will say that our our designer and editor, Chris, is in a thumbnail discord for people who work with creators and design their thumbnails. And that it's is. like a very niche and very small group of people. Let's get Tim in there. And yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. find it like when I look when he tells us about it and sometimes he'll hit our slack because we'll post a video and then the other designers in there will be like, Hey, maybe you guys should tweak it like this. Hmm. And then he'll send us the the chat and I'm like, yeah. yeah. They, they discuss our thumbnail every yeah. Monday morning Yeah, and it's far better. We used to just put out thumbnails on Twitter and ask Twitter what they thought. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, was this I one? I did enjoy left? that to be which honest. Was, yeah. Yeah. Which that was, was very fun. It yeah. was fun. But the feedback was all over the place from mm-hmm. some I'm people sure. who like we are like, all right, that's that's pretty good feedback. But yeah. you, I don't think I've ever made a thumbnail before. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we also yeah. found one time we did oh, it. Man. Yeah, one time we did it, and we were gonna put the video out like a week later, mm-hmm. and then another organization did that thumbnail that everyone voted and put on. the video out and soon the before video out we did before us with the same title, and wow. we were like, oof, okay, we I don't know if we can do that publicly because yeah. again, like titles and thumbnails are that valuable. Yeah. That. Yeah, especially for complex topics like yeah. we're covering sometimes. That's interesting. So we do stopped you, doing it after that. Yeah, because you don't want to share yeah. too early. Do you find <laughs> that you see uh, other channels like copying things that you do? And do you do anything about it? Um, at times, yes, but we've also been inspired by others, for you sure. know? And yeah. like, there's a, there's difference. a difference. Yeah, yes. for sure. We, we've, we've seen it more across other projects now now that we mm-hmm. you know we have our newsletter the published press we have um you know we we have what we're doing on shorts we have you know what we're doing in the in the on on the main channel sometimes we see like a con- a concept that we say in the main channel and then we see a tiktok that has 5 million views mm. with the same concept but someone just they someone just, just they, they hosted it. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah yeah so we we don't know um the the newsletter is more obvious um when it happens but there's only so much information and i also think that what I've learned, especially in media, is oftentimes like you are, as a media organization, you think of yourself as like a, I think of us as like sprinters, like we're sprinting. And there's a lot of people who are going to start taking off right behind you as you start going. Mm-hmm. And that's natural because they see something that, that's working and they're like, ooh, let's do that version or our version of that. And if you ever start running, it's possible they'll sprint past you. Mm-hmm. And so my visual, once people start, you know, taking some of our concepts or anything that's potentially inspired by us is like, oh, okay, so there's something's working that we're doing because people are thinking they could, they yeah. want to do something similar. And so we just have to keep on a sprint or we have to go in a direction that they can't even yeah. predict. Or right? just get a robot. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> we basically, yeah. 
We just need a robot. And just like don't <laughs> don't look behind you. Just be yeah. like, all right, I just have to get a bigger keep, robot. Keep going forward. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, so I promised I would ask you guys this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you've talked to so many creators, and you've you've sort of analyzed the behavior of so many creators that I'm curious if you were to roast me, create, critique my channel and don't be shy about it. Cause like you're saying like, Oh, it something must be working. Yeah. Things are working, but like we're all pretty much experimenting with um, a large majority of the things we're doing. And we're willing to take that feedback. I would love to like, when you guys watch our videos, what do you like pausing the video and saying, you know what they could have done better here? Or are you saying like their thumbnails should be better or something like that? What do you guys talk about with our channel? And could do all channels too. Waveform, Waveform Clips, oh, Studio, true. like the whole shebang. Because I mean, three of those are fairly new to us. And yeah. they mm. obviously could use more work. Those ones aren't at the level the main channel is. So everything could use work. And the most people we talk to are tech YouTubers. So it's nice to have an outside perspective on things who you've seen everything you could imagine. Yeah. So a couple questions before we get into this. Yes. First of all, how do you define the audience for the MKBHD channel? Like, because I fit into a certain audience category, but yes. I'm curious, how do you define the lion's share of the audience there? Ooh, well, I do, I have two buckets. I have one, which is the, the subscriber who is watching the videos for entertainment value and is somewhat into tech. And I have two, which is the person who is searching for the device and is making a purchase decision. And usually the lion's share at the beginning is type one. And then over time, SEO takes over and a lot more people watch the video making a purchase decision and that's type two later. And it depends on what the video is. A lot of times if it's not about a gadget, it's more type one here for entertainment, tech related. But a lot of times it's a video that is just about a gadget not many people care about. And the type one audience is very small and it's a nine or 10 out of 10. And then over time, SEO takes over mm. and it does much better because it's an interesting or popular device per headphones or something like that. But it's generally those two buckets for me. So uh, here's what I would say. I'm I'm watching for more like edutainment, right? Like I'm looking to get educated. I like to be, I'm not necessarily like an early adopter. Mm -hmm. I'm not watching to potentially purchase tech. Yeah. I'm watching because I'm getting educated on what's happening so I don't get left behind <laughs> in the sure. world of, of innovation. And then also for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite videos, and I think both of us, why we were able to cite like even your head turn in it was when you started talking about Dogecoin or when you talked about Dogecoin. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was something that was like tech adjacent that was in the zeitgeist that was really interesting. So what I would say is like uh, getting a little bit more comfortable outside of your typical topics and thinking about starting to step into what's tech adjacent, yeah. I think is would be really interesting. I thought to me. Tesla Bot explained was great. Yes. Basically, yeah. like the majority of your explained series. Mm -hmm. and, and thinking about like how can I apply the MKBHD format and style to things that you know more people are are interested in? Is it like yeah. the tech behind certain you know movies or shows? Is it like? You know, like Squid Game, for example. Squid Game is a massive topic. What's the yep. MKBHD video on Squid Game? Is there one? Right. Or is that really out of line? And so yeah. that's what I would say is that I think there's an opportunity to not necessarily cut out, like like broaden the niche too much, but to step into more zeitgeisty topics that are, you know, taking over. Is it like, you know, the audio waveforms behind Old Town Road? Like, why does that sound, mm. you know hit us in a certain way? Why mm. are we receiving this audio waveform in a way that's taking over the world? I think that's the type of stuff that I would want to start to turn to you for and yeah. be really interested in. And maybe that starts as shorts on the studio yeah. channel or something. Right. I'm I'm really glad you said that because part of my struggle every year, and I sort of explained to you like the way I divide up the year of like first half is trying new things, second half is like gadget, gadget, gadget. Mm -hmm. Every time I try a new topic or like stepping a little outside yeah. of what's typically like a gadget video i'm always the back of my head is always nervous about like no one's gonna want my opinion on this or no one's mm. gonna really care like people are here for like i can very quickly associate the best performing videos typically with the most interesting gadgets yeah and so if it's not one of those interesting gadgets why would anyone care about my video and then i make the video and inevitably it does really well right and it it, it always hits me as a surprise every time, but like that video you mentioned, or even like the YouTube rewind video I did, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or random videos about like the Tesla bot or things that are adjacent, 
I always have that concern and I I wonder where the line is about like how far out is out of bounds because I have interests that are all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but I like that. That's, I'd also, yeah. I would be really interested to see you react to certain things like how other people are, maybe it's like Hollywood VFX, maybe it's like, you know, this other, like you're really into video making as well. Yeah. And so I would be really interested, like Peter McKinnon does a series like that. Mm -hmm. I love his series. Right. That series yeah. is really fun to watch where yeah. he, he reacts to like Hollywood VFX. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be really interested to see you do some of that. Like, and, and you can dial it into like tech related. So is it like, you know, and this could be on the studio channel, but like reacting to robotic camera movements. Yeah. I, I would be really interested yeah. in watching you do that because I like content and this is across everything i like content that has those like double narratives where mm. instead of finding those robotic camera movement videos on instagram myself i'd rather watch them through your perspective mm -hmm. where i'm watching them and discovering that content for the first time plus i'm hearing your thoughts on it mm -hmm. and i think that in a world where we are so inundated with like the for you page and with instagram and like all these algorithms are feeding us content i think we want our favorite personality or a trusted source to curate the internet for us. And so I think finding like what's happening on the internet that's adjacent to what I talk about and how do I put my spin on it? And yeah. Dogecoin was one of those things. It was just one of those it things. It was one of those things. And I think yeah. there's more of those things. Yeah. Um, and then the the overarching, I think like to keep, you know, someone's attention again, it's what I said earlier. It's I think it's like the opportunities to show, not tell, to say like, you know, when you're if you're reviewing the Rivian uh, during the process, are you trying to make it to the other side of the city while someone else is trying to make it there in a Tesla mm. during the same, while you're reviewing the car? Right. So two things are happening at once. I'm tracking a map. And oh, then, yeah. You know? That stuff, I love those ideas. And yeah. then the logistics of actually yeah, shooting yeah, yeah. them I get is it. Yeah. so, I mean, we had the car for 24 hours. So that's right, an extreme right. example. But I I do think like mm -hmm, the dual narrative sure. type thing yeah. would be fun to play with more, especially mm -hmm. in like the classic gadget review. Because- it's there's there's lots of opportunities for it. Lots of gadget reviews are pretty straightforward. You know what's coming. Mm -hmm. You know I'm going to get to the specs. You know I'm going to get to the design. You know I'm going to get to the battery life. I'm going to get to the camera, and then we're going to close it out. Like, mm -hmm. let's let's have a little more fun with it. You also mentioned fitness tech with Chris Paul as like a dream yeah. collab when we talked. Yeah, I think fitness tech though, just with you, would mm -hmm. be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I would be interested in other versions of tech. I'm terrified of crossing those lines, but I might have to eventually. I mean, yeah. the tech in the fitness world is cut with tempo and tonal and Peloton yeah, and crazy. everything now. It's really blowing up and it does make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, you also have this studio channel to like test these formats, well, which is what, amazing, I think. Yeah. I think we we also have a little more of that flexibility to, to play with new formats and ideas and things like that on the studio channel. And I think that's what we will be doing in the next year or so is just like, hey, I wonder how well shorts will work. Or I wonder if mm -hmm. we can we can do a storytelling type of thing. I mean, we did a thousand mile road trip, but we'll yeah. have more things like that coming up. That'll be fun to play with. Um, I was saying I was, I'm afraid of crossing those lines because the the fitness world and the, the ultimate tournaments and everything are like my offline time. Mm. And I, I, I unplug so hard for like two straight days when I go to a tournament. And I... I know that the second I connect those, I can never unconnect them again. And I'm like, all right, do I really want to start doing fitness tech videos? Because then that's, I'm plugged in forever. I can't unplug. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it's interesting how much I think fear is attached to YouTube, mm. like as a creator. Like so much so much of your decision making is based on like this, this fear of, you know, is that it's it's because is that, is that part of my identity yeah. or am I stretching? But I think mm -hmm. it's because those that two thirds of what we talked about with the with your content market fit, where it's like the algorithm and the audience are two thirds of your decision making. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's not necessarily it's only a third of what you want to make. Yeah. All right. Well, I have uh, I have one more question. How fast can you type the alphabet? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? <sighs> I do not know. Okay, well, actually, we can find out real quick. Okay, uh, let's Adam, do it. Do you have the uh, the keyboard, please? All right, here we go. <laughs> so we have a little game here. Do you guys watch Top Gear at all, or have you ever seen it? Do yeah. you know the the race, the reasonably priced car? They kind of all the guests they come on, they put them in this car and they race them around the track and they keep a leaderboard. Oh my god, mm -hmm. this is so we terrifying. kind of wanted oh, a yeah. version of that for the podcast where all our guests were doing it. We have a leaderboard. 
Um, and we have a little. I could type website. sentences faster than I could type. It is the alphabet. so yeah, it's much very harder. Stressful. Yeah. I'm, um, by the way, my palms are sweating so right like, now. I'm yeah. terrified. We I, also, yeah. because we're prepared in a tech, that keyboard's terrible because it's a MacBook. We have yeah. a chiclet style keyboard oh. or a mechanical one if you'd rather. Dealer's choice, but or. <sighs> So we've got these. I don't two know what you're more here. comfortable with, but we want to give everyone a fair shot to be uh, both our parents. Do that both best. Our, we also give pair? three tries, so it's not right. Why don't we try? both use this? This? Yeah, yeah. that's you more tension. Nice that's more interesting yeah. Because, yeah. because we've never used visually it interesting. We both are on the same playing field because we've never used a keyboard like this. Wow, I have like seventh grade. You forgot to do the reading, <laughs> yeah. and they just called on you. Nerves. The only thing we're a little worried about is how easy it is to, if someone's a regular watcher all the time and, and starts learning that this is what we do to guess, they'll practice. But so far, everyone has <sighs> I, been equally uh, as nervous. I, I mean, this say. is terrible. So if I mess up, do I So do just I delete? if you mess up, it's not delete. Just get to the next one. Um, yeah, we'll give three tries. It basically starts when you hit A, and then <sighs> we'll reset it. Um, no pressure. And then at the end, we can, oh, we'll man, pull up the guys. leaderboard after we're done, and we can see where everyone uh All right, here there we go. go. Whenever you're, do you guys do it like this? You don't. No, do it I like did this, home row, but you can you can do however. What's you want. home row? Home like uh like just resting your hands on the keyboard. Like like <sighs> you, in know, all the you know the, the two correct indents? Way. What is the, it on H the, and J? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. yeah, that's your home row. The yeah. lingo that you just used made me more nervous. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. ASMR mechanical keyboard. Super accurate. That was it? Yeah. What was your time? 13. 13. Do I do again? 13. Uh, yeah, I get one more. You can go one more, yeah. Okay. I don't know why I'm nervous right now. I'm not <laughs> even doing it. It's like being worried you're going to get called on next, mm -hmm. except you know you're getting know called, I'm on get called on next. Yeah. It's like having to do a presentation. <laughs> yeah. Hoping they go too long so the this bell rings and you don't have to do it. Ten. You shake, Ten. Shake three shake seconds, three seconds. That's a huge improvement. You want to try again? Or? Ten. Yeah. Ten. Ten point eight. It's All a right. good sounding keyboard too, by the way. Like <laughs> this is a, this is a great is sounding good. keyboard. Uh, yeah. Screen recording is going. Oh, wow. Sure. Yes. This is... Do you want to know your place now, or do you want to wait? No, I want to wait. Okay, okay. I want to wait. I want to wait. So should I reset this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just don't mess up. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> there we go. What? What is this pace? But he got to watch me. Oh, my God. How'd he do? 8.177. Nice. That's a pretty good first round. That's right. a wild first round. I was going through it in my head, like... It's yeah. there's Queens, a couple Queens that Gambit, are on the yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's on the ceiling. Wow. Yeah, the, key, the mechanical yeah. keyboard. Gambit, he was so. going through it. He, <laughs> yeah. was, watching, he was watching yeah. my back. <laughs> yeah. I'll do one more. All right. Oh, please. Oh, man. This one I'm missing. You're getting up. a groove. Six seconds. Nice. Yeah, but I think it. ABC. It won't accidentally count one. If like you yeah. miss it, it'll just wait till you finally get it right. So 6.677. I mean, you shaved two seconds off. You, you want to go for your third I think try? We should go yeah, for the you third. should. Yeah, at this rate, at this rate, this is this is frustrating for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I get a rebuttal or no? Uh, no. Nah. We'll, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I should have gone second. Oh, you missed C, by the way. All right, that's over then. Uh, yeah, no, there it is. No, he missed okay, C. Okay, so it's my second one. So that's pretty do, good. Do you want to take his third try? Do you want to? You go can take my third try. Well, then you you'll go. No, oh, you've seen him do it. No, no, no rules out. Then the rules. Okay. Right. 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 If you get first place off of this one, there'll be an asterisk. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Cool. Fair. I I don't think. Yeah. Okay. I think I've had too much coffee for this. <laughs> yeah. This is already a mess. Oh, I missed yes. it. Anyway, okay, I didn't even. Yes. Oh, it was gonna be, if you're not was, looking, you yeah. can just totally miss. Yeah, it was gonna be nine going. seconds. So. It's good. Yeah. It's good. All right. All right. All right. Well, we'll get it? that. We'll get. How about we'll have the best number represent Colin and Samir. We'll okay. Have oh, best both. number. Well, team. Yeah. Your team. Team score. Best right. number cool. on the leaderboard. Team Col score. Colin's not happy about no, that. No, no. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Pretty good. Team score would be what was it? Six point eight. We're looking at. 
seventh place out of... Oh, my God. What is first place? 14, 4.432. 4. Who was that? Yeah. Uh, Quinn from Snazzy Labs, a okay. tech channel. I'm not sure wow. if you guys are too. Yeah. Doug Demuro's on here at 5.9. Wow. Doug he did Demuro. pretty good, yeah. He also wow. did it on his lap, like, laying down on a couch. Yeah. So that was pretty impressive. That's pretty that's impressive. impressive. We'll say, you know, you're not used to the... The keyboard. This is a that's new what keyboard did it for, for me. Yeah, yeah, that's it was, what it was. For if me. this was in yeah. a Gmail and on your laptop, sure. you'd be flying. Yeah, yeah. too much that. coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Easy. wow, nerve wracking. Um, Samir, yeah. we appreciate the time, yeah, and uh, I'm glad we got to have you guys in the studio in person. We're gonna probably do these more often, but thank you for for coming out here Thanks and for, uh, for spending the time. If you guys want to watch the video that they've done on their channel, visiting the studio little mini tour, a little rapid fire 20 questions, stuff like that. Definitely check out their channel. We'll link it below, but obviously you want to watch their other videos too. So if that's not up by the time this is up, watch those. And I think that's pretty much it for Waveform this week. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time. See ya. Peace.